Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Tour de France 2022 in Pro Cycling Manager. So after three days in Denmark, the riders are finally in France. Today we are going to ride three more stages. We start with stage four between Dunkerque and Calais. It's basically flat, even though there are a few hills uh, during the, the parkour. But the main issue with the stage are going to be the potential crosswinds close to the end. Maybe we can take advantage of that. Then we have a very critical stage for the GC because some GC contenders may lose a lot of time in this one. We are going to tackle some cobbles, finishing in Arenberg. And then finally, we'll ride stage number six, the first hilly finish, punchy finish of the race with a few hills at the end that are going to be the first chance for the punchy riders to do something in the race. So the first one for today is expected to finish as a bunch sprint. We'll try to avoid that and try to break the peloton apart in the crosswinds. And so today I decided to take one of my riders in the breakaway. Michael Cherel is in the breakaway together with Guinive and uh, Pierre-Luc Perrichon. There are six points in total available for the KOM. So I'm going to try to take those and, and try to wear the polka dot jersey at the end of the day. So we are approaching another KOM, the fourth of the day. Things have not been going my way because Pierre-Luc Perrichon actually took all of the KOM points. He's actually attacking already, but this is probably not for the KOM point. Let's see if this time we can actually beat him because in the previous ones, and actually, I think he made a mistake. Can I take this point? I am going to take it. Finally, finally, I win a KOM sprint. Because in the previous ones, Pierre-Luc Perrichon was stronger than me because of his hill. It was enough to beat Michael Cherel. But in the meantime, we are approaching the crosswind zone. So we'll see what that actually means for the race. So at the moment, Michael Cherel is the one pacing at the front of the peloton. There was a gap. I don't know. I haven't checked it yet if any GC contenders have been left behind. But we are approaching a few hills here. So let's see if we can try to do something. And so we are now in the final six kilometers. We have our sprint train ready. I don't know if this is the best way to do it. I am decided I decided to go for uh, Aurelien Parépentre this time. And with... Ooh, I need to use my energy gels. Totally forgot about that. Um, with four kilometers to go, Standerwolf is still leading my train. Are some riders already sprinting? I think they are. Let's maybe start sprinting with Cosnefroy already. We have um, a turn, a corner here. Let's go with Olinarsen this time. And with Parépentre, he's going to be the last one. But yeah, he's not going to be good enough to fight for the win. And it's Alexander Kristoff who takes the win. I did not sprint with Ben O'Connor, but he's not going to lose any time. There's a big big group of 54 riders and another one of 30. We have Vingegaard again and Geraint Thomas. Are they actually losing time on purpose? Pino as well, because it's always the same riders. So the Norwegian giant Alexander Kristoff wins another stage in the Tour de France, beating Caleb Ewan and Fabio Jakobsen then Dylan Grunewagen, Hugo Hofstetter and Aurelien Parepentre. And as I mentioned, it's the same riders once again, the same GC riders losing time in, the, in today's stage. Adam Yates losing time, Guillaume Martin, Vingegaard again, losing three and a half minutes more. Geraint Thomas, I mean, you name them. Thibaut Pinot is there as well. I mean, it's always the same. It feels like this is scripted in a way. Not that it's not realistic because some riders do lose time on purpose in some stages, but it, it feels like it's a bit too scripted. So Pipogana is still in yellow, three seconds ahead of Walt Van Aert, who remains unable to gain any bonus seconds to, to get yellow. Caleb Ewan extended his lead in the green jersey, while Cyril Lemoine keeps the KOM jersey, but now on the same number of points as Pierre-Luc Perrichon. We only got two points with Michael Cherel. It was definitely not what I wanted. And now stage five of the Tour de France. This is going to be a big one. And not because of its length, because it's quite short, 146 kilometers only. 
but with a lot of cobbled sectors that are surely going to be a problem for many GC contenders, including Ben O'Connor. He only has 64 cobbles, we'll have to do our utmost to protect him in this one, so I probably won't try to go for the, the, sta the stage win, but eventually I may change my mind, because, you know, that's what I do. So today, with the cobbles, we have rain. What a great combo. Even though it's August, everything is possible. We have Bob Jungels and Mikael Scherrell in the breakaway. Scherrell came in a bit later, so he had to use a lot of energy to join the Luxembourg rider. And potentially with this group, with 22 riders in the breakaway, we may eventually have a chance to fight for the stage with Bob Jungels. He's probably the strongest rider in in the breakaway and is on a plus two day so he's feeling pretty good i mean we have jonas ruch and edvald bosanagan as well and i saw that bnb &B has like five riders they have five no six riders even they have almost their full team in in the breakaway but even with that they are not really working and we are approaching the first cobbled sector of the day villeur au tertre Afresan, and I'm sorry if I just butchered this name. Let's make sure we are in a good position with Bob Jungels to tackle this three star cobbled sector. And actually, I should pay attention to the peloton. I mean, my riders are in a good position. They are in a good position. Ben O'Connor is right at the front. The pace is not too high. So, this first sector should not be a big problem. Oh, and things keep happening to Jumbo. Now it's Vingegaard, but I mean, he's already 13 minutes behind in the GC. So it's not a big, big problem for them. There is a group here that got split and Bouchard, Bouchard actually got dropped. Guillaume Martin. Guillaume Martin is the one pulling this group with Thibaut Pinot. Are the same riders again here. I see Chicone. Micah, yeah, it's the same riders again. It's always the same riders. And the cobbled sectors keep coming at the riders. We are in another one. Three stars. Oh, and there's a crash. There's a crash here with two riders, Bistrom and Pierre Roland, crashing from the breakaway, and they are now caught by the peloton, who apparently got stuck behind the car. Really, game? Really? That was not supposed to happen. And now Rigobert Turan, Jakob Fulsang, and Thies Benut all crashing. Oh, this is huge. This is huge. Krajvik and Gorka, Gorka Izagire also crashing. Jumbo is really having a bad, bad day. They are having a bad day, and Ben O'Connor, I need to up his effort a bit, because he is dropping a bit behind. I do not want that to happen. Oh, and it's Goujard now with Thibaut Pinot. Okay, so this pace is insane. The pace at the moment is absolutely insane. I cannot breathe. I cannot breathe at all. I need to get some water with Shechel. Let's try to do that at the end of this cobbled sector. Let's go for it. We have a, a little bit of space now until the next cobbled sector. Let's try to make sure Ben O'Connor stays in the, in the peloton. And we go for another one. But my riders are having a lot of trouble. Ben O'Connor, is he going to be dropped here? Is he already going to be dropped here? Even Oli Nassen is having trouble at 85. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. This is not... This is not how the race was supposed to go. I don't want to be losing Ben O'Connor already. This is way too early for that to happen. He is going to lose a lot of time today. He is going to be dropped. He's almost out of energy. This is so crazy. This is so utterly insane. Bob Jungels is in a great position still. There's an attack by Christophe Laporte. What the heck? Now Cheryl with a puncture. Where is Ben O'Connor? Ben O'Connor is done. Oh, he's so done. Oh, no. He's going to be dropped. No, he still survives. But there, there is another sector. There's another sector here. Should I try an attack? O'Connor? Yeah, O'Connor was dropped. O'Connor was dropped. I don't know what to do. I do not know what to do now. I just need to have Kosnefroy maybe, or 
No, not not that. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. You need to wait. You need to wait for Ben O'Connor and then protect him. Let's attack with Jungles. But it's a strong attack. Maybe I can drop a few riders behind. Okay, three of us left. Jonas Ruch and Bodnar, do you want to work with me? Please say you want to work with me. At least let's try to win the stage. Damiano Caruso, Roglic crashing as well. Roglic is in A1, which is where Ben O'Connor is. Oh, this is so crazy. I have no idea what the heck is happening. I see Wout van Aert here. A puncture for Geraint Thomas. I have no idea what's happening in this race. And we got caught with Bob Jungles. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. There is another, there is another sector. Okay, so seven kilometers to go. Let's use the energy gel on Bob Jungles. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything here. And I cannot beat the others in the sprint. Can I? Unless they are more exhausted than I am. Cyril Lemoine. Oh, this guy is doing everything today. <laughs> Is doing everything in this Tour de France. Okay, let's try to attack. No, I cannot. Can I? Let's try it. Oh, this is already sprinting. No. That is not what I intended. Lemoine is in my wheel. No one else can do anything. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose the stage. Am I gonna lose the stage to Lemoine? Oh, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. Cyril Lemoine is going to win the stage. Ahead of Bob Jungles, how to lose a stage to Cyril Lemoine. That is what you just witnessed. I was totally lost. I was totally lost in the stage because uh, I was trying to make sure Ben O'Connor didn't lose a lot of time, which ended up happening. I was trying to win the stage with Bob Jungles, which ended up not happening. So this stage was definitely not what I expected. We did not win it and we lost a lot of time with Ben O'Connor. Ben O'Connor was not in the main group that finished the stage about two minutes after the stage winner. There we had Roglic and Pagacar. He finished in this group four minutes and six seconds down on the stage winner. So, so losing two minutes to, to Pagacar and Roglic and to a few other GC contenders. With us, there were Dani Martinez and Enric Mas, uh, also Adam Yates, but Adam Yates, I think, is a bit far in the GC already. Ah, uh, this was terrible. This was terrible. I knew it was not going to be easy, but I did not expect to lose two minutes in the GC. Speaking about the GC, we have a new leader. Christophe Laporte is going to be in yellow for the next stage. One minute and one second ahead of Bob Jungels. Pipogana is now third, Wout is fourth, and Stefan Kung in fifth. In the meantime, Ben O'Connor is down to 37th. Four minutes and one second behind. So the final stage for today, going from Binch to Longvie, 221 kilometers, the longest stage and the only one above 200 kilometers in this year's Tour de France. We have Roglic, Michael Woods and Pagacar as the main favorites, also with uh, Mathieu van der Poel and David Godou. We have Benoit Cosnefroy in the main favorites, in the top 10 favorites. So maybe he does have a chance today. And so to make it consistent in this Tour de France, we have rain once again. And with the rain came the crashes and with the crashes, the withdrawal of Caleb Ewan. And so with about 30 kilometers to finish the stage, I put Stan the Wolf working at the front of the peloton, setting a strong tempo to put some riders in trouble and to potentially try to win the stage. I think I'm going to try to do that with Benoit Cosnefroy is my best, my most punchy rider, is the one with the best chance to do that. So I might do a little train with Paré Pantre, uh, Ben O'Connor and Cosnefroy at the end and try to win with the Frenchman. Okay, so I'm actually going to try something a bit different. I'm going to try an attack, an early attack with Bob Jungels and see if he can eventually gain some advantage on, on the others. Let's launch the attack already. Let's hopefully try to escape and make sure that we don't get dropped here. So Jungels is going together with Andreas Kron. They are gaining a bit of an advantage, but not too big, probably not enough. So let's go back to plan A and have um, Parépentre with Cosnefroy and Ben O'Connor actually in, in the middle of them. 
it's after the now with Stefan Kung and uh, Genier also at the front. Oh, and I forgot about the energy gels. I totally forgot about the energy gels. Let's actually go 99 with Pare Pantre here in the downhill. Because I think that might be a good idea. Let's use his pace for as long as we can. We are in a good position, I think. I hope that we are in a good position. Let's now go with Ben O'Connor. Let's start sprinting with Ben O'Connor. And let's launch Benoit Cosnefa into the final kilometer. Can he take the win? He seems to be in a good condition. Matthew van der Poel is trying to overtake him. But I think this is going to be the win. Unless Dylan Tunes overtakes him. No, it's going to be the win. The first win for Age Desert. Benoit Cosnefroy taking it on the sixth day of racing. And we finally win one. Benoit Cosnefroy beating Mathieu van der Poel and Dylan Tunes to the line to take stage six of the Tour de France. Really, for a second there, I thought I was going too early with Ben O'Connor and then with Cosnefroy. But no, it was just enough. This was also a great stage for Ben O'Connor because he didn't lose any time in the GC. Unfortunately, Bob Jungels was not in the main group, which means that he actually drops to third in the GC. And again, I see riders like uh, Ciccone losing two minutes in this stage. Also Kreisweig, uh, Geraint Thomas. So this does seem like it's kind of scripted by PCM. This is new behavior. This would not happen in the previous editions of the game. I'm still deciding if I <laughs> like this or not. Because yes, it's true that some riders do lose some time on purpose in, in Grand Tours. But come on, this limits the, the chances of a, team's lo a team like Ineos massively. They bring three riders, Dani Martinez, Thomas and Adam Yates. They could potentially ride for the GC, all three of them. And the fact that two of them are on purpose losing time just kills the chances of the team if something happens to the one that is actually going for it. And in the points classification, because of the withdrawal of Caleb Ewan, we have a new leader, and it's going to be Alexander Kristoff. is going to be wearing the green jersey in the next stage. And I am even more surprised with the second rider in this one. Cyril Lemoine, he has been collecting a lot of points from the intermediate sprints, but he's second in the points classification ahead of Grunewegen and Fabio Jakobsen. Lemoine finishes this episode wearing the polka dot jersey, he's leading the mountain classification. The best young rider is, of course, Tadej Pogacar, and the best team is now Jumbo Visma, as we are in second in this classification. And with our first win in the race comes the end of the episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. In the next one, we are going to have our first taste of proper mountain stages. We are going to start with stage 7, finishing in La Planche des Belles Filles. After that, we are going to have another hilly stage with a punchy finish in Lausanne. And then stage 9 is going to be another mountain stage with multiple tough climbs. It's going to be a really important day to finish the first week of the Tour de France. So if you have enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit the like button. Also, leave me a comment below. Tell me what you thought of it. Leave me some suggestions if you want to. And if you are not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do that and don't miss my future videos. As usual, stay safe, stay positive. Until next time, goodbye.